Welcome everybody to the Ford Bronco. The variant we have today is the Outer Banks variant. I know there are so many variants, it can get really, really confusing. This is the Outer Banks, so it's the mid variant. It gets the all terrain tires, and this is in the four door with the soft top configuration. You can have this car in so many different combinations, it can actually get really, really confusing. Let's check out how this big brawny SUV is. The front end of the Bronco, again, it's very nice. It looks imposing and you can feel that it's a big brawny SUV. The headlights are round with the iconic, you know, daylight running strip on the headlight, which again, gave it a very unique personality. And you can definitely tell it's a Bronco at night. This has the grill with Bronco embossed on it, but you can get it with a different designs of grills, which are obviously available as options. This car is all about the options. You've got some latches on the bonnet as well, which you can definitely use to mount different stuff because again, it's all about accessorizing your Bronco to make it the most capable off-roader machine you want it to be. This is the Outer Banks variant, so it's got regular bumpers on the front, but they do have an option of off-road bumpers, which are standard on the higher variant, which is the Badlands variant. Again, you can tell how tall, how big this SUV is, and it's very imposing. Very, very cool looking, and it has its own charisma on the roads the side profile of the bronco is again you can see very boxy very rectangular which i like and it actually reminds you of the bronco from the yesteryears which was on sale several decades ago in fact even its closest rival maintains a very similar silhouette of being rectangular and boxy which is the jeep wrangler I think this looks much better than that though and this looks much more imposing as well. It's got the Outer Banks uh, sticker on the fender to remind you what variant this truck is and this has the regular 18 inch rims which give it a very urban touch. If you do get the higher Badlands variant you get beadlocked off-road rims with much wider mud terrain tires. This has regular all terrain which makes it a bit more civil and much more fitting for urban environments as well as off-road environments. As you can see this is the four door with the soft top option because this can be had as a two door and something with a hard top as well. So this is the four door with the soft top and the soft top can be folded. Not the best weather to fold your soft top, I'd say in this weather, but in summer, I feel like the potential is endless. The rear of the Bronco has very traditional boxy SUV looks that's carried on from the side and personally, I'm a big fan of the way it looks. It's got very rugged looks and it's got the spare mounted on the tailgate, which reminds you that it's a big, big brawny SUV. The spare wheel mount has the stop light and the reverse camera integrated into it and it has some very beautiful LED rectangular tail lights which house the indicator and the reverse lights. Since this is the Outer Banks, it's not the off-road variant so it's got plastic bumpers just like the front. If you do opt for higher variants or more off-road serious variants, you do get uh, metal bumpers on this which can perhaps take abuse a bit better. I just like the way it looks and with especially the soft top, it lends a bit of an outdoor feel. Not the most ideal setup for this kind of weather, but I mean, for summers, I can only feel what kind of potential it would have. I love the way the Bronco looks from all angles. Now I'm inside the Ford Bronco and you can see it's a very utilitarian touch but it has a lot of modern amenities as well which I find is the perfect blend in 2023. It's got a very big screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got a part digital, part analog gauge cluster so it's got an analog speedometer but it's got a big screen for your trip meter, fuel and everything which I think again is the perfect blend. You've got a nice gear lever with the Bronco emblem uh, on it and it's, it's pretty nice shifting. You've got a mode here which is for the four wheel drive mode so two wheel drive 4l 4h you can shift it to this knob and there is goat mode as well so it's meant for gravel off-road tarmac and lots of different things for so this knob it feels very very tactile you've got cup holder you've got a grab handle here for the passenger and you've got a little bit of a plaque to tell you that this is a ford bronco to give it a bit more of that rugged touch uh, you've got dual ac controls everything physical buttons and the audio buttons as well which is all physical which is really nice the steering wheel it's a three spoke steering with the bronco logo not a ford logo in fact you could find the ford logo on only one place in this whole car which is on the rear tailgate nowhere else would you find a ford logo in the car here 
You've got a nice blend of brown and black inside here, which feels really nice and feels very premium. You've got some buttons here for the diff locks here, the hazards, the traction control, and you've got a GoPro mount to mount your GoPro right here, which is extremely cool. So you can film yourself while you know doing your off-roading stuff and everything. And there's a charge port, USB charge port here as well, to charge your GoPro while you're shooting it, which is honestly the coolest feature I've seen in a car in recent times. It's just beautiful. You've got big Bronco embossed on the dash here. And again, it's just very, very nice place to be. The seats are very nice. It's a dual tone seat uh, with black and brown. And they're very, very comfortable for a car like this, especially because the suspension is a bit on the bouncy side. So, so the seats soak up much more. And overall, the experience is very comfortable. This is the soft top. So you can actually pull this latches on both sides and then fold the roof away. Uh, very useful for summer and actually will let in a lot of light because otherwise it's a bit of a dark interior especially the windows are heavily tinted from factory so it's a bit on the darker side again it's a lovely place to be and it feels very much at the price point this car is sold at in the rear seat of the Bronco and space is not an issue however it's a bit too dark in fact this factory tinted glasses are I feel a bit too dark and it's quite a dark ambience inside here perhaps if you open the roof it would have been much better but not the right weather honestly i would not advise in winters to open this because it's really really cold and windy leg room is not an issue i have enough space to tuck my feet under the seat as well however the backrest is a bit too upright i would feel for my liking the headrests are really big but the backrest is i feel a bit too upright the windows are pretty big so whatever light it lets in through the dark tint it's very very nice you've got a grab handle to help you climb in you've got uh, a proper charging port here which you can plug in anything and you've got usb ports as well and you've got the window switches which are very similar to the front because in this bronco the doors are removable it's only a few uh, screws you have to undo and the doors can come out which is again give it that bit more lifestyle vehicle touch but yeah, it's a nice place to be and a third passenger is welcome because the middle hump isn't that big and they have a headrest as well. You do have a center armrest with some more cup holders, but the backrest, I wish it was adjustable. I've not been able to figure out how to adjust it. If I could tilt it a bit more for an angle, it would have been a much, much more comfortable experience. Wheel of the Bronco. So let's get the numbers out of the way. This has a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. This also is available with a 2.3 EcoBoost V6 and a 3.5 tur twin turbo V6, which is for the Raptor. Let's see how this car drives. So this is mated to a 10 speed automatic, which is usual for Fords. Slotted into drive and set off. And it just jumps off the line. There's so much talk. There is no turbo lag as such. And it just, you know, it's very easy to drive it in slow speeds in city traffic and I'm sure this is because the gearing and all and the torque spread is modified for off-roading purposes. I'm sure because you don't wouldn't want to rev the nuts out of your engine when you're off-roading. I'm currently on a very very bumpy soft, soft, you know on a very bumpy surface and it's very gravelly and the car does become very bumpy on slow speeds but if I bump the speed up it actually feels much much better the faster i go the more stable it is that's the rule of this car don't stop for brake bumps don't stop for speed breakers just fly past them because the faster you go the better it will feel that's for sure when you do turn in you do realize that the steering has excellent feedback and it's actually very easy to maneuver this vehicle at slow speeds in city traffic it might feel a bit too heavy and at parking speeds but once the speeds build up it actually feels really really good the engine is really punchy and it sounds pretty good as well especially if you floor it if i floor it it sounds good this v6 is pretty punchy as well because it helps this suv go from zero to 100 in under six seconds which is honestly a revelation because it's so so heavy and it's so large and if you see something this big coming so fast it can definitely be intimidating and scary for other road users the fuel economy i'm getting an average about 30 to 13.5 liters per 100 but it's a mix of very bad city traffic and some highway driving again i can't compare because I've not been driving it very, you know, eco-friendly because the engine sounds so good and I'm compelled to drive it a bit 
aggressively. But yeah, Ford has nailed the suspension, the engine, the steering feel, and it's something they've been always been famous for. So I'm not actually surprised they did so well. Honestly, this is a fun to drive SUV. In conclusion then, the Ford Bronco. Well, there's a lot of hype this car has to meet. It has lots of waiting periods and dealers are selling it for markup as well. That's how much the demand is. I was initially really excited to try it out. And to be honest, it's met all my expectations really well. It's not the most sophisticated SUV or the most comfortable, but that's not what the Bronco is about. It's about being capable anywhere, everywhere and Whenever you want to take out your vehicle, be it snow, run, rain, mud, anything, your Bronco will always do the job for you. At around $65,000 Canadian for this Autobanks variant, I actually think it's really, really good value because it's immensely practical as well for what it is as a package. Honestly, it met all my expectations and I couldn't be happier to finally get my hands on this vehicle.